So we have example number 12 now, and we see that we have a position function. This fun position function happens to be s of t. Again, s of t and x of t are interchangeable. So s of t is equal to t cubed minus 6t squared plus 9t plus 2. That's the position of our particle, and it's valid for all t greater than or equal to 0, because time is moving forward from you know, whenever our beginning time is, which is when t is 0. So we have a different parts here. Part A is asking, what's the positions of the object when t is equal to 3? So in other words, what's s of 3? Well, if we're interested in the position of an object at a certain time, and we have the position function, all we're going to do here is just plug in 3 to our original position function. So s of 3 would just be 3 cubed minus 6 times 3 squared plus 9 times 3 plus 2. And what does that simplify to? Well, 3 cubed is 27. And 3 squared is 9 times 6 is 54. And 3, uh, 3 times 9 is 27. And then we have plus 2. So we have 27 minus 54 plus 27 plus 2. Well, all of this, 27 minus 54 plus 27, that's 0. Right? Then it's combined to 0. So 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. So that's our position at time t equals 3. Part B asks, what's the instantaneous velocity at any time t of this particle? Okay, well, this object's velocity, we know that velocity is the derivative of position. So all we got to do here is just take the derivative of our position function. So the derivative of t cubed would be 3t squared. The derivative of 6t squared would be 12t. And the derivative of 9t would be 9. And the derivative of 2 would be 0. So there's our instantaneous velocity. And that works for any value of t greater than or equal to 0. That's how fast so we plug in that value. That's how fast the object will be traveling at that particular time. So there's part B. Part C says, what's the acceleration of the object at t equals 1? Well, first we need the acceleration of the object, period. Then we can plug in 1. So let's get a of t for starters. All right, hold off on this. So just a little bar here. So we have a of t. A of t, we know, is the second derivative of position and the first derivative of velocity. So let's derive this velocity function. What's the derivative of 3t squared? Yeah, it's going to be 6t. And the derivative of 12t will be 12. And the derivative of 9 is 0. So there's our acceleration for any value of t. We're interested when t is equal to 1. So we're going to plug 1 in for t. So that's 6 minus 12 or negative 6. So our acceleration is negative 6. Uh, and technically, if we, if we think about units, um, velocity is meters per second because position was meters. And so velocity is meters per second. And then acceleration, this is going to be meters per second squared. Okay. Um, I guess I should put that in there. Let's just get that down. Meters per second squared. Every time you derive, you basically add and uh, add one to the degree of the denominator. So this, again, this is meters, meters per second, meters per second squared. Okay. Part D asks, when is the velocity uh, at equal to zero? When is the particle at rest? Well, if something's at rest, it's not moving. If it's not moving, its velocity is equal to zero. So we're interested in finding out when our velocity is equal to zero. So this is an algebra problem, because we have our velocity right here, 3t squared minus 12t plus 9. We're interested in figuring out when that's equal to zero. So 3t squared minus 12t plus 9 is equal to 0. We have to solve this. Again, when we're solving a quadratic, we want to look for a pair of binomials that will multiply. But before we do that, we've got three terms, and they all have a multiple of 3 in them. So let's factor that 3 out. Okay, doing so, we see we have 3, and then t squared will be left here. 12 divided by 3 is 4, so this would be minus 4t. And then 9 divided by 3 will be 3. So plus 3, that's equal to 0. So what we want here are to find those two binomials that are going to foil into t squared minus 4t plus 3. And we know that will happen if we can find the two numbers which multiply to 3 and add up to negative 4. What are those two numbers? Yeah, they're negative 3 and negative 1. So negative 3 and negative 1. Okay, now we have our zero product law, so we're going to say, okay, let's cover them up two at a time. So we have t minus 1 is equal to 0. What value of t makes that true? 
one, exactly. We cover up the other one. Now we have t minus three is equal to zero. We don't need to worry about the three there because we can just divide by three and zero divided by three over here is zero. So basically we're just interested in what value of t makes that statement true if t is three. Three minus three is equal to zero. So we have t equals one and t equals three. Those are our two times when our velocity is at zero. So basically our, our object was moving and then it stopped and it began moving again and it stopped and it began moving again. Right? And when it stopped, it was at the first second and the third second. All right, last but not least, we are interested in is figuring out whether the speed is increasing or decreasing at t equals four. So we have to plug four into both the velocity and the acceleration and look at their signs. Same sign means the speed is increasing. Different signs means the speed is decreasing. So let's check that out. We want v of four. So when we plug four into the velocity, we're gonna have three times four squared, so three times 16, minus 12 times four, keep the universal there, okay, and then plus nine. So three times 16 is 48, four times 12 is 48, plus nine, so we can see there that that's equal to nine. So our velocity at time four is a positive number. Now let's look at our acceleration at four. A of four, well here's our acceleration function. We're gonna plug in four, so we have six times four minus 12, so that's 24 minus 12 or 12. So there's our acceleration, there's our velocity. So is our speed increasing or decreasing? Yeah, it's increasing because our acceleration and our velocity have the same sign. They're both positive. All right, so we are increasing speed, all right, because a of four and v of four are both greater than zero. Okay, that's an H right there. They're both greater than zero. Okay, they're both positive.